DWM has been my window manager of choice for well over a year. And every time I switch away from it or go to try a new window manager, I always end up going back because it's just so good. And I'm so used to it and it has all my key bindings and it has scratch pads and I've set up SXHKD so I have my key cords and it's just uh, it's a familiar place for me and I'm happiest there. But in the last week or so, I've been playing around with DWM and basically what I ended up doing was taking my old configuration and just shuffling it off into an, a dot .old file and starting completely over. Now, those of you who watch the channel for any length of time know that I like changing things. Specifically, I like to write stuff. And one of the things I wanted to do with DWM was go through and do a lot of alterations to the bar itself. I wanted to add the bar padding patch. I wanted to go through and change from SL status to DWM blocks. I wanted to go through and add some click events to the modules in my bar. And I wanted to have more flexibility when it comes to selecting colors, not only for the modules, but also for the tags themselves. I've been messing around with it now for a week. The problem is, is that the whole process was kind of a pain in the butt. And it made me realize that the DWM bar is just not as customizable as I really want it to be. It's not obviously a big deal. I mean, in, in the grand scheme of things, this is not going to affect my productivity whatsoever. It's just another one of those superfluous things that I like to mess around with. So I had a choice. I could continue to keep messing around with it. I could go back to my old configuration, which was basically refined to the point where I just enjoyed it so much. Or I could switch window managers. And what I decided to do was actually switch window managers. I've done that now. I've This is my third day now on a brand new window manager. Now, I've used BSPWM before, several times before. I've raced it on video before. I've been using it on streams. When I did my long-term review of, of Debian, that was the window manager that I chose to use. So I've used BSPWM many times before, but I've never really lived in it for a long period of time on my main machine. Mostly because there's also a, a DWM install here, and I always moved back to that. Now, I decided to go through and do this for multiple reasons. But the biggest is that because D BSPWM does not come with a bar, you can choose what bar you use. And I've chosen Polybar. Polybar is amazing and has a ton of configuration options. And there's just a ton of stuff you can do with it. So it kind of opens up the possibilities for allowing me to tweak things pretty much forever. I mean, it's probably going to be a huge like time sink, but we'll talk about that another day. The The point is, is that because I can use Polybar easily, and it's meant to be used with other bars, I'll be able to go through and just go ahead and tweak to my heart's content. With DWM, you can use Polybar if you want to. But everybody I've talked to, several people in my Discord, have just told me how much of a pain in the ass it is to get DWM working with Polybar. So honestly, I didn't even try. It's probably something that I'll go back to eventually just for fun. But I really didn't want to put that effort into it now. So I've switched BSPWM. So I want to show you what my BSPWM looks like right now. So this is what we're at right now. now obviously, like I said, I have Polybar up there and I've changed my wallpaper, and I have the terminal theme. There are a few things I still haven't riced yet. I haven't riced like the, the dunce notifications yet. I haven't gone through and added a different GTK theme yet, so there's still some stuff that I need to do, and I want to add a couple more modules to Polybar, but I haven't decided what those are yet. I know I want to get a, like a update one working, and maybe a temperature one up there or something, but that's for, you know, as I go along. And I'm also going to do a video, probably coming up pretty soon, about adding click events to each of these modules so that when I click on them, they do something. Not something I'll probably plan on using all that much because I don't use my mouse all that much to interact with things on my bar. Like I don't, I mean, every once in a while you'll see me on camera, shake my mouse and go up to a workspace and click on it. I don't do that that often, thank goodness. But sometimes uh, that mes that mem muscle memory or whatever just gets me, maybe my hands already on the mouse. So I you know go over there and do that anyways. But the, the, the point is, this is BSPWM. This is the way I have it now. So let me talk about my initial experience. I've been using this now full time for three days. I haven't logged into DWM for three days. And there are some things that I like 
a lot about BSPWM, there are some things that are not so great. So let's start off with the positive stuff. I like pre-selection. So if I go through and do something like this, I can pre-select where the next window is going to be. So in that way, this is very much kind of like i3. It's a manual tiling window manager. But also, if I don't pre-select, it's just something like this. And so that in that way, it's kind of a dynamic window manager. It's not really, but the point is, it's cool that way. And I like that. I also like that the configuration file is nothing but a shell script. That's all it is. Really, all this does is continuously call one specific program, BSPC. So it could be a shell script or bash script. You probably could also run this in other, you know, interpreters as well if you wanted to. Um, but the, the point is, I like that it's this way because, you know, I know at least a little bit of bash so I can go through and add stuff if I wanted to. And the syntax is just really easy. So it's not, it was kind of a breath of fresh air moving away from DWM where everything is written in C and you have to know the syntax of C. Now, I got really good at it, at least in terms of D DWM. But the point is, is it's still overly complex. And when something goes wrong in DWM, you have to kind of know how to troubleshoot that. With BSPWM, at least with the configuration file errors, it'd be pretty easy to, to suss out what that you know problem would be just because it's just, it's just a shell script. So the other thing I really like is that I have complete control over the number of workspaces that I have. Now, I'm, I'm sure that in DWM you could probably do this as well, but I never even tried because it was overly complicated and I would have had to mess with the source code. With BSPWM, I can go through and have 20 workspaces. Now, everybody knows I'm obsessed with workspaces. Right now I'm using one, two, three, four, five, six on this monitor, one, two, three, four, five on this monitor. So I have some free ones. That's a travesty. I need to fill those things up. The, the point is, is because I can control not only how many workspaces I have, but also which monitors they show up on, I could theoretically go through and add 20 per monitor if I want to. Now, I think that's probably a little overkill, but I could if I wanted to. At one point, I had 14 on both, and the problem I mostly ran into was trying to figure out how to assign the key bindings to a, the ones after 10 because then you have to add in extra modifier keys. I'm still gonna be tweaking that because frankly, I don't know if 20 is enough. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if 20 is enough. But anyways, I like that part of it. Now, the biggest pain point I've seen so far is scratch pads. Now, everybody knows I love my scratch pads. Scratch pads are basically applications that show up via key binding and then go away via the same key binding, but they don't really close. They're they kind of live on an invisible workspace. BSPWM does not have this functionality built in by default. It just doesn't. And that is uh, very sad for me. So I've kind of hacked together a solution because I couldn't use this without it. If, if I couldn't have found at least some mediocre solution, I wouldn't have made it three days. So what I've gone through and done is created a series of rules here at the bottom, as you can see. And those are for different either terminal applications or regular applications that will then then can be triggered by a key binding. So for example, I have super M will do my mail client. So that's Neomut. And then the difference here is that it opens up every time I press that key binding. So if I keep pressing that, it doesn't go away like a normal scratch pad. What I actually do is have like five instances of Neomut there. I, Super N has pulse mixer on it, but I had to quit that in order for it to go away, like super super Q in order for it to go away. So that's not really a scratch pad, So because no, nothing runs in the background. So if I open up a terminal via scratch pad like this and run HTOP, in a normal situation, in a normal place where you actually have scratch pads, you could go through and press that key binding again and it would go away. In this case, it actually just opens up another terminal. And in order to get rid of this, I actually have to quit it. So if I go back to that scratch pad, it's gone. Now, I have read a few places where there's some kind of, like, even more hacky way of doing this so that it will stay open. But none of them work really well. So if there's a thing that is going to get me to stop using BSPWM, you know, within the next few days, 
it's going to be that scratch pad functionality that's just not quite where I want it to be. Now I know there are third party uh, applications. I know there's like tilde. Tilde is a, ter a terminal that will allow you to it's basically a drop down terminal but it would go through and allow you to have that scratch pad functionality. I know other terminal drop down terminals kind of do the same thing. So I could try to do that. I'm not sure if I really want to do a third party thing. Or I know that there's like a third party actual scratch pad like application. I think it's called T drop, T flop, something like that. Uh, I've never actually gotten that to work. Uh, I may give it another try. Uh, the, the point is the scratch pad things is the the one area of BSPWM that I just don't like all that much because there's, it doesn't exist. So uh, yeah, that is my BSPWM setup as of right now. Now this is going to evolve over. I'm going to try to give this a full month. I want to go longer than that, but we'll see how it goes. I'm just I'm going to dedicate myself to a month not going into DWM using BSPWM, and I'll make another video after that month is over, and probably kind of talk about my thoughts of how that month went. I don't expect the thoughts to change that much because I actually really like BSPWM. I always have, depending on what day you ask me, really between i3 and BSPWM, which one I like better would probably change. Uh, there are several things about BSPWM that I like better than i3. There are several things about i3 that I like better than BSPWM. So a month from now, I don't know how that perception is going to change because I lived in i3 for a long time. So I know a lot about it and I know what I like and dislike about it. I lived in DWM for a long time and I know what I like and what I dislike about it. So we'll see how my perception of BSPWM changes after using it for a month. So that's it for this video, a little bit of a rambly video. Uh, and I'll probably do like a workflow video maybe if you're interested in that. If you're interested in that, make sure you hit the subscribe button and leave a like. Uh, definitely consider doing that. Uh, you can also leave a comment on this video if you have thoughts on BSPWM. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I would like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Sid A, Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2, Fun 2, Patrick o, Primus, Marcus, Meglin, Jack Neptool, Steve A, Mitchell Art Center, and Mateus Carbon Dated, Merrick Camp, Joshua Lee, J-Dog, The BSC's Rock, Peter A, and Crucible. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you next time.